A fifth column is any group of people who undermine a larger group such as a nation or a besieged city from within, usually in favor of an enemy group or nation. The activities of a fifth column can be overt or clandestine. Forces gathered in secret can mobilize openly to assist an external attack. This term is also extended to organized actions by military personnel. Clandestine fifth column activities can involve acts of sabotage, disinformation, or espionage executed within defense lines by secret sympathizers with an external force. Emilia Mola, a nationalist general during the Spanish Civil War, told a journalist in 1936 that as his four columns of troops approached Madrid, a fifth column of supporters inside the city would support him and undermine the Republican government from within. 126 A circumflex 127 The term was then widely used in Spain. Ernest Hemingway used it as the title of his only play, which he wrote in Madrid, while the city was being bombarded, and published in 1938 in his book The Fifth Column, and the first 49 stories. Some writers, minful of the origin of the phrase, use it only in reference to military operations, rather than the broader, and less well-defined range of activities, that sympathizers might engage in to support an anticipated attack. In the United States at the end of the 1930s, as involvement in the European war seemed ever more likely, those who feared the possibility of betrayal from within used the newly coined term fifth column as a shorthand for sedition and disloyalty. The rapid fall of France in 1940 led many to blame a fifth column, rather than German military superiority. Political factions in France blamed one another for the nation's defeat, and military officials blamed the civilian leadership, all helping feed American anxieties. In June 1940, Life magazine ran a series of photos under the heading Signs of Nazi Fifth Column Everywhere. In July 1940, Time magazine called Fifth Column Talk a national phenomenon. In August 1940 the New York Times mentioned the first spasm of fear engendered by the success of Fifth Columns in less fortunate countries. One report identified participants in Nazi Fifth Columns as partisans of authoritarian government everywhere citing Poland, Czechoslovakia, Norway, and the Netherlands. Witkin Quisling aided the Nazis during the campaign in Norway, by proclaiming a Nazi government on the day of the German invasion in 1940, and his name of Quisling is associated with Nazi collaborators. During the Israeli War of Independence, Palestinian Arabs who were displaced from their villages were removed to prevent a fifth column from engaging in activities hostile to the newly formed State of Israel. John Langdon Davies, a British journalist who covered the Spanish Civil War, popularized the term fifth column by publishing an account called The Fifth Column in 1940. The New York Times published three editorial cartoons that used the term on August 11, 1940. In November 1940, Ralph Thompson, Reviewing Harold Lavin's Fifth Column in America, a study of communist and fascist groups in the U.S., in the New York Times, questioned his choice of that title. The phrase has been worked so hard that it no longer means much of anything. In the U.S. and Australian radio play, The Enemy Within, proved to be too very popular, however, this popularity was due to the belief that the stories of Fifth Column activities were based on real events. In December 1940 the Australian census had the series banned. British reviewers of Agatha Christie's novel Enorum, in 1941 used the term to describe the struggle of two British partisans of the Nazi regime working on its behalf in England during World War II. During the Japanese invasion of the Philippines, an article in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette in December 1941 said the indigenous Moro Muslims were capable of dealing with Japanese fifth columnists and invaders alike. Another in the Vancouver Sun the next month described how the large population of Japanese immigrants in Davao in the Philippines welcomed the invasion. The first assault on Davao was aided by numbers of fifth columnists or residents of the town.